interpreted. They can uh, sometimes give an answer to that. Uh, so a tactical decision, um, if you rescue people first or if you extinguish the fire first, for us in our tactic always comes together with the question of air or smoke flows in building. So if you're able to control the smoke spread, uh, and uh, you think you are able to extinguish the fire and there will be no dangerous spread of smoke uh, and bringing people that are still in the building into a dangerous situation, you can keep the building, uh, the people where you are and you can go for the fire and extinguish the problem. Um, but um, if you can't control the smoke spread and if you can't control the fire, uh, you have to try to get as many people out of the building as possible. And, and we think that both of these topics um, can only be answered if you know that you can control the fire or if you know that you can control, control the smoke spread uh, in building because that's what's killing uh, people and uh, bringing people uh, into danger. So smoke flow control for us is a key factor in challenging in our tactic um, or deciding if we go for people or if we go for the fire uh, first. Uh, and different countries uh, in Europe have different experiences and sometimes uh, we are really um, forced uh, by some experience. Uh, three years ago in the UK, there was the Grenfell Tower fire. I guess it's also uh, not famous, but well known in the United States. Here in Europe, it's really discussed quite a lot. Uh, it's a uh, fire where basically because of some cladding material uh, and some other problems in the construction, uh, the building was uh, on the left side after 30 minutes after the fire department arrived uh, from level 4 to level 23. Uh, the whole facade was burning on one side uh, of the building and it took a couple of hours for the fire basically to destroy the whole building. Uh, and 72 people died in this building. Uh, the fire service um, is now also with some uh, architects and um, responsible people from the building uh, maintenance um, on, in, in court and they have to defend uh, their action. They have to defend um, why they forced hundreds of doors, why they forced hundreds of fire rated or smoke rated doors. Um, and if this action also contributed um, to uh, losing the interior staircase case um, about 45 minutes after the fire service arrived. So some interesting question and uh, this was also a huge discussion here in Germany um, about the tactics in mid-rise or high-rise buildings. Um, and um, the question if we contribute uh, to the spread of smoke. Uh, two things which derive uh, in the UK, um, they now bought a couple of hundred smoke hoods. Smoke hoods it's, it's something which um, in my area, I have 250 fire engine trucks, uh, vehicles, and we have two, three, four smoke hoods on every engine. Uh, it's an absolute standard uh, tool in Germany and we couldn't believe that the fire service in London didn't have a single smoke hood. Um, they didn't have any preparation uh, to guide uh, dozens of people through smoke filled areas and haven't been prepared for that because they thought uh, they might not need it. But uh, now they have a couple of hundred smoke hoods and they also discussing now with uh, stairway protection teams um, the task of um, being able to fight fires in building, but still try to prevent smoke spread uh, in buildings. So that's one part of uh, the European capitals. Um, another part is interesting for you like Paris, an absolute unique fire service. Um, they have a lot of um, young fighters and these are really army fighters. Uh, if you look how what they have to do, each morning uh, they have to do this exercise, um, which is the standard morning exercise for every Paris firefighter. And if you train the, this way, and you're also used to uh, train with uh, hook ladders, uh, they do really amazing uh, rescues and uh, operations on the outside of buildings. Um, I have two and a half thousand volunteers in my area and we would never be able to do it. But on the other side, they are very parallel or very similar to Germany. Um, if we have uh, smoke-filled uh, stairways, if we have people in buildings, 
uh, we are very, very trained to rescue people even through st uh, smoke-filled uh, stairways and interior escape routes. Um, this is something absolutely normally uh, in German and also in Paris, but not at all, for example, in, in the UK, in London. Um, and so I always find it interesting uh, and challenging for us as the fire service to see what seems to be absolutely normal in some countries is absolutely unknown in other countries. Uh, and um, you can explain some of these different developments um, by different building constructions, by different building codes. Um, if you have single staircase buildings or if your buildings always um, have two separate staircases, um, if you have um, ladder trucks available or not. So a lot of things can be explained by circumstances, but uh, I think and uh, um, I've always realized that you are also aware of that, that a lot of our actions are also uh, somehow focused on tradition. And I think we have to challenge uh, our tradition once in a while to see what is really worth preserving and what has to be challenged because the environment around us also changed and we have to see if we are still uh, the top, top row. So, Dr. Wright, if, Dr. Yes. Oka, do those smoke hoods have attachments for an SCB or are they just mostly for rescuing people to keep them uh, safe have, or um, smoke filled? Also different, in my area we have filter ones which are not attached to our bottles. Uh, these are the normal ones here in the volunteer fire service in Germany. But some like the Berlin Fire Department, they have one rescue hood which is attached to the bottle of the firefighter. Um, but mostly in Germany, if we have, like I also have special root teams and my special root teams have a double bottle uh, SCBA uh, gear. And if they have double bottle, so which is 60 minutes air under normal operation, then they have their Y and they can connect a second hood which gets air from the bottle. Uh, so it's also some kind of philosophy um, available um, uh, technique and material. Uh, we normally use filter ones and only if we have 60 minutes uh, SCBA bottles extended duration, we would hook up people here in Germany uh, to, our, to our air. Yeah. So if we discuss fire ventilation or smoke spread control and, and, and situations in Germany, we always look at multi-story buildings. And it's also interesting if I discuss ventilation with people in the US, they always have a single um, a family building in, in, in their mind. Uh, and in Germany with our 80 million people uh, roughly, uh, we have more than half of our population living in buildings with three, four, at least up to a hundred of apartments. Uh, so only half of the German population lives in one or two family um, buildings. And therefore all these buildings have staircases. And if you discuss um, tactics, if you discuss fighting fires, we always have multi-story, multi-level, um, buildings in mind with um, escape routes attached to each others um, and the single family home is not our main topic uh, if we discuss ventilation and if you discuss ventilation to firefighting colleagues uh, in other countries um, it's always for me the first point to see if we think about the same problem or if we have different setups um, in our mind this often explains why we come up to different solutions you know, so the same topics in Germany about unidirectional or bidirectional flows, about how a fire communicates with the outside, if there are windows open or if a fire can communicate uh, and exchange um, air and smoke uh, to the inside of a building. Uh, so flows of smoke and fresh air are always related and it's a similar a discussion here in Germany, but if we discuss it, we always, as I said, discuss it in multi-story buildings and are always interested in the staircase because in our philosophy, the staircase is the most important room in a building. Um, if you control the staircase, um, we think about a two-dimensional problem of fighting a fire on one level, but if we are losing the staircase, we realize that we're discussing about a three-dimensional problem in a building. Uh, we have the third dimension, which is the hate, and 
uh, if the stairway is not under control, um, we think it's a much different situation for us and for the rest of the people uh, in the building. So in Germany, you will see a lot of discussions and they always come at some point to the question, what is, a, what is about the staircase? Uh, do we have it under control? Can we keep it smoke-free during the whole operation or do we lose uh, the staircase? Uh, and that the same with the discussion. Yeah. Do our most single family or multifamily structures have enclosed staircases in, in your? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, normally all of them have enclosed staircases and um, up to the reach of uh, the aerial truck, which is 30 meters, so 23 meters in, in, in height, uh, which is six or seven stories. Well, you only need one interior or one staircase. Um, and if buildings are higher above the reach of your aerial trucks, uh, then you need um, two staircases. Uh, and therefore, ladder rescue or rescuing people through staircases is always important for us. And uh, even if we have buildings with double staircases, with two staircases, uh, well, we had basement fires where both staircases have been filled with uh, smoke. So still, even if there are two staircases, we would never allow ourselves to say one is the attack staircase and one is the, is the, the escape staircase because we had in a lot of times the, the experience that people don't realize what we suppose a staircase to be. Uh, and therefore, even in buildings with two staircases, we don't allow ourselves to use one staircase as only the attack staircase and allow it to fill up with smoke. Uh, so therefore a staircase has a much higher priority uh, in our mindset uh, here in, in Europe, or especially in Germany. So we discuss fire dynamics and we discuss tactics. Uh, and uh, as I said at the beginning, if you try to connect them on the real fire ground, it's always the question, do we control doors, interior doors? Do we control interior spread of smoke? Uh, are we in control of the staircase? Can people uh, kept in place? So can you use the defend in place strategy and keep people in their apartments? Or do you have uh, to get them out of the building somehow during the operation? And if you do so, um, can you do it through a protected staircase? Uh, so a lot of discussions and some are very similar to what I uh, saw at FDIC in your countries and some are discussed in a total different way. And looking at our experience and our main task of always protecting the staircase and even if a building has more than one staircase, uh, we would never give up a staircase. So, uh, and we come to a building and the staircase is already smoke filled. It's not that we accept it. It would be also one of our first tasks uh, to get in control of the staircase again, uh, to again have a fire and a problem at only one level uh, and getting rid of the third dimension of the problem, um, which is one of our uh, main interests. But yeah, I know it's quite, it's quite different. But then we realized uh, that by stretching hose lines, by forcing doors, um, we allow ourselves uh, to destroy some means of safety. Uh, a fireproof door, a fire sealed door works until the fire service shows up and um, forces this door, opens that door and uh, stretches their hose lines. So in a very critical way to ourselves, we often ask ourselves after an op operation if we have been the cause of smoke spread. Um, and also we think we have to stretch hoses to get somehow water on the fire. Uh, still, we discuss if our action participates and contributes uh, to the spread of smoke and maybe to some very severe smoke inhalation of civilians. Uh, and looking at all these situations, we would, dis would distinguish ventilation into three main fields. Uh, we would name it anti-ventilation or uh, smoke spread control. If we try to keep doors closed or use curtains, we would call it defensive ventilation. Um, if we try to ventilate the stairway, uh, so the ventilation profile 
it doesn't accelerate the fire it's only there to protect the staircase and protect some certain areas of buildings and we would call it aggressive ventilation if our ventilation profile uh, enables the fire to speed up uh, in reaction so if we have an underventilated fire and we apply air to it and we know that this can accelerate the fire uh, we would call it aggressive ventilation um, in the kind of meaning that if we are aggressive to our enemy uh, our enemy the fire will be aggressive uh, to us so um, the preferred situation in germany will be defensive uh, ventilation or anti-ventilation from the beginning uh, so this leads to a lot of sentences and i don't think that our firefighters are smarter in fire ventilation but we try to explain them some main sentences uh, and one of these main sentences would be fight underventilated fires underventilated or apply water uh, before you apply air uh, and these key sentences are explained to firefighters uh, once in a while so that we try to get it into their mind and if they are in a stress situation we don't really we nearly use acronyms uh, we try to explain people some certain key sentences by examples by case studies and we think that if they understand key statements and key relations uh, even in the stress situation uh, they might be able uh, to go after these principles uh, so this is also kind of training um, your firefighters and prepare them for a stress situation in a real incident uh, and uh, again the discussion is always we open doors um, we allow smoke to spread we allow the smoke to spread into interior staircases and if egress routes are blocked by smoke and it was because of the action of the fire service we would really feel bad uh, and this philosophy is in our mind since about 20 years uh, so it's more the philosophy of smoke spread control uh, with this ventilation then like maybe from you all the fire uh, ventilation profile you are discussing or um, that you speed up the fire it's more the smoke spread uh, than the actual fire dynamics discussion here in germany you will find hundreds of these pictures uh, doors that are there for decades um, so the smoke can't spread and the fire service shows up and the first thing is they open that door keep it open by 90 degrees with a wedge stretch their hose lines and the fire service is the main cause of smoke spread um, into interior egress routes um, and uh, therefore since also about 20 25 years we have a discussion about door control um, nearly similar to to what you are discussing but for three reasons for fire dynamics on one side for smoke spread control on the other side and also for the reduction of smoke damage insurance companies about 10 20 years ago had a huge influence uh, in germany because they examined uh, fires and um, sometimes they realized and made um, an estimation that the main cause of uh, the smoke damage was not the fire it, uh, itself it was um, the action of the fire service by kicking doors uh, forcing doors and allowing smoke uh, to spread and it could have done uh, in a different way so we had faced quite a lot of criticism from insurance companies 10 20 years ago uh, in germany for doing what we think um, is a brilliant idea so we discussed seven possibilities of store control uh, but also this discussion is uh, 20 years ago uh, keep the door closed close the door behind you control the door with stuffing or with a chuck cut a door partially it's actually an action which is shown on this picture it's done in the north part of europe they use a motor saw cut the door in the middle uh, into two halves and open just the lower part um, of um, an entrance door or do we need some kind of tools to be able to block openings uh, in buildings so these discussions have been extensively done and also with the um, in, in conjunction of fire dynamics how can we change a bi-directional flow which would be a normal situation that you have a bi-directional flow maybe through a window and on the other side 
um, in contrary to uh, your attack route, um, if you try to go to a unidirectional flow profile, which goes into the direction of positive pressure attack, but we know that in this case we would accelerate uh, the fire and uh, we only have another few minutes uh, to be able to get water on the fire um, and trying to discuss all these ventilation profiles um, we thought about how can we have an improved unidirectional flow a unidirectional flow which would be our aim but being improved being less uh, in an extension to interfere with uh, the fire and the burning regime um, of the fire so this was also an interesting discussion about 15 years ago in Germany. Uh, and by all these discussions, we used um, smoke spread calculations to first uh, see what are the main influences uh, in such uh, multi-story buildings. What is the characteristic of flows? Where does fresh air flow into the fire? Is there turbulence um, in bidirectional flows? How does these flows of fresh air and smoke through the same opening mix? Um, a lot of interesting discussions on the left side without a fan or on the right side, um, the situation in the building with a fan. So we extensively uh, calculated the influence of positive pressure ventilation for staircases. And we came up to these 11 main parameters. Uh, and these parameters are the size of the fan, the entrance situation, the size of the entrance door, the staircase flow characteristic, number four, uh, flow resistance in the staircase number six, the open windows in the staircase number seven, the entrance door to a burning level number five, some mixture and flow processes, the fire size number nine, the opening, the outlet area, and number 11 would be wind. Uh, and by looking at all these 11 parameters, uh, which uh, some of them help us and some of them really work against us, we thought, uh, which of these 11 parameters can we influence uh, on the real incident, on a real fire ground? And we found, for example, that the wind um, is a very bad enemy for us, but it's hard to control it. We have to accept it uh, the way it is given on the day where we have our uh, incident. Uh, so we discussed all these 11 parameters and found that the most important one is not the size of the fan because we tried the same if it doesn't work try harder using larger fans being able to really overcome um, the unwanted um, bi-directional flow through the entrance door which is the cause of smoke can be flowing into our staircase and so we came with a lot of discussions up that number five is the parameter that has the most influence on smoke spread into staircases. And this is the way where we always want our firefighters to be, um, to control and check the interior staircase for people that are lost in smoke and are leaving the building and maybe are just um, surprised by smoke and can't leave the building anymore. So we always want to check the staircase first. And so we always want to be at position number five to be able to control the smoke spread. Uh, so a lot of interesting discussions, but 20, 15 to 20 years ago. And this led to a development since 2005 that we played with a lot of different kind of tools uh, to be able to block openings uh, and prevent smoke spread. Uh, so even we had tools that are adjustable in the width and also in the height to, to mount them into doors to be able to crawl in. And uh, we found that uh, they work quite fine, but they have to be very tough to work in the firefighting uh, environment. Uh, we did hundreds of real fire tests, um, tried to combine tools with each other. And since 2006, we have thousands of real incidents experiences. Uh, like uh, this fire in 2006, it was a children's room, 100% on fire. The corridor of the apartment, very hot, even chips and falling from the roof or from the ceiling. And the staircase, which was directly behind this corridor, was to 100% protected from any smoke. And with this experience from 2006, 
uh, we've seen a development that uh, staircase protection, stairway protection is very popular and very famous and very focused um, on the German fire ground. Uh, we discussed it in basement fires that we don't want to have smoke in our attack route because if we have to leave, we directly want to be after the first curtain in a safe environment, also for the safety of our firefighters, uh, not allowing the, the staircase to fill up with smoke. And in case something happens to our attack team, we have to rescue them through a smoke-filled uh, staircase. Um, and um, I could show you hundreds of these pictures from all over Europe, from all over Germany or Vienna, Austria. They always look the same, that we try to absolutely protect the staircase and separate the problem and the fire from the rest of the building. Um, this is also Austria, where they rescued people through the absolutely smoke-free staircase and had a fully developed uh, apartment fire. Uh, a lot of uh, videos are available from France. Uh, they experienced the same, and as a result, uh, we think that going from the bidirectional flow into maybe some kind of positive pressure attack, which might be unidirectional flow, well, but with the disadvantage of accelerating the fire, uh, we think that we should fight a fire with an improved unidirectional flow, meaning that we have a small reduced amount of fresh air flowing low to the fire compartment, lifting up the smoke layer up high and getting rid of uh, the fire gases uh, through the window in also a unidirectional flow. We think that this is for the safety um, of our firefighters and for the rest of uh, the people uh, in the building. And this would be our uh, preferred uh, ventilation profile to attack fires in multi-level buildings. Um, wind impacted fires um, position to place a ventilator in front of the building. There are dozens of site discussions, which is the best distance um, and how can I increase the strength of a fan uh, in front of a building. And we also found the same result that if we go closer with our fan, uh, so the height of the opening should be the distance of the fan. Um, and if we block the upper part of the entrance door and go closer with the fan, we can increase positive pressure attack for a staircase or PPV, um, if you name it, um, by a factor of nearly two, by increase it by 100%. We had documented fires, like in a building where two children have been reported uh, on the third floor. Uh, the firefighters went up the interior staircase, found the entrance door to the fire compartment on first level, nearly before failing, there were already some flames at the door, so they mounted a curtain uh, to protect the interior escape route, found the two children and were able to um, get out of uh, the building um, and already saw flames all around the curtain. So for us, it's also a portable fire resistance store that can protect our own uh, escape route. A very popular top topic, an absolute normal situation in Germany and tested in real fires and in fire tests. If you ask the Berlin Fire Department, this was a survey in 2012 and 2013 of 67 battalion chiefs from the Berlin Fire Department, how they judge, judge rescue methods um, to uh, rescue civilians from the jumping pillow down to aerial ladders, and the most important um, situation was uh, keeping the stairway clean uh, using positive pressure ventilation and smoke curtains uh, to keep stairways, uh, stair the stairway protected. Uh, so this was a survey already seven, eight years ago in the Berlin Fire Department. And this showed seven, eight years ago that using PPV to have a little bit of overpressure and protecting the staircase with the smoke curtain was the absolute preferred way of rescuing people in multi-story buildings in Berlin. We have hotel and hospital fires uh, where you have to stretch a hose line, where you can't get everyone out of the building and we have to care about smoke spread. Um, this is another hospital fire where they have been able to reduce the smoke and the damage to a single interior room by getting rid uh, of the smoke by some uh, ventilation 
uh, measures um, Berlin 2013, rescuing people through smoke-free staircases, Austria, Hong Kong, and the wind situation uh, would be another huge topic. I don't go too deep into it, but we even found that for normal wind profiles, moderate and small winds, um, it's also an interesting tool to absolutely reduce the smoke um, movement into staircases, but it has its limitations if you really go to not even wind impacted, but wind driven uh, fires. Uh, that's another topic. So it comes to key sentences, uh, fight under ventilated fires, under ventilated, uh, and if a fire is already ventilated, we would fight it ventilated. So we wouldn't all change the ventilation profile. We take it as it is given and try to take advantage out of it uh, and discuss if we go for the people first or if we go uh, for rescuing operations first. Uh, so for me, it's always interesting in the US, discussions are always, for me, at least in, in conferences, um, focused at number two, uh, that if you discuss door control, uh, you discuss it somehow in relation to limit the amount of airflow to a fire, which is only one of three of our aspects, how we discuss uh, smoke spread and ventilation control and, and smoke spread control. We discuss it in first hand in Europe that we want to block smoke to protect escape routes. We discuss it in a second situation that we want to limit air. And we would also discuss it in this third place uh, that we can, by blocking openings, um, take advantage of the positions of our fans and increase the strength of positive pressure ventilation for staircases. So that's about a very short uh, going through the main aspects uh, of how different ventilation discussions can be all around the world. Uh, and I like always to challenge myself when I go to FDIC, I go into classrooms where people trying to present the advantages of positive pressure attack because it's absolutely not my normal field of operation. But I force myself to go into classes where people really advocating um, PPA to really try to understand what experience they made uh, to come to this conclusion. Uh, and therefore, thanks for giving me the opportunity to challenge you with these European ideas, which might be also challenging um, your discussions quite a bit. And I always try to understand if people have different positions by how different is their environment to mine is their experience important to me and can I take certain aspects of what they are doing into my environment? Does it fit or does it not fit? And I know these discussions and I'm open to it. So if you have any questions, don't hesitate to, to ask. That was, that's awesome, Dr. Eich. You know, uh, when I first saw you speak about this and I went home, convinced my fire chief to buy one and these to try it out. And now we have them in every one of our apparatus. And, you know, now that the generations have gone through with training that it's, it would be completely formed for these not to be set up, even on a training evolution. Um, we've been, we've been having great success with them because we're also a very minimum staff fire department. You know, we're four guys up, four to six guys on the scene for the first 25 minutes. So the smoke curtains really, um, let somebody be able to leave their position at the front door and go get a lot of other stuff, a lot of other work done. Um, uh, have you had success with compartmentalizing as you're moving through a complicated structure web by deploying more than, let's say, two yeah. smoke curtains? Yeah, yeah. Like we have one smoke curtain on every engine or truck. We don't distinguish between uh, our vehicles. So all our vehicles are uh, have tools uh, for both uh, tasks. And I have 250 fire vehicles in my county, about 180 uh, truck engine or, or squads, or however you, you'll name them. And every one of them has a curtain. Uh, so we had fires where we had one curtain at the door from the staircase to the, to the fire level, a second one at the entrance door, like a cascade from the ho common hallway into an apartment, 
uh, I know from fire services that they mounted the, the curtain into the engine door of an apartment, realizing then it was only a kitchen fire and the kitchen door was closed. So they took it down from the entrance door of the apartment and mounted it again um, at the kitchen door, which is an operation of a couple of seconds. Uh, so yes, we have often, quite often um, two curtains in a row. Um, not that often that you use two curtains on the same door. But we had also such situations, there was a fire reported um, where the entrance door was already destroyed totally by the fire. It was a fully developed apartment fire and multiple people above the, the, the level. And to fight a fully developed apartment fire needs 15, 20 minutes um, to also reduce the smoke production rate uh, to a small um, ratio. Uh, so therefore they mounted two curtains at the entrance door to block uh, the staircase from the burning compartment, fought the fire through the window from the outside, uh, um, resetted the fire quite a bit and used all the rescuing operation through the interior uh, staircase. Uh, yes, in this situation where those are missing or where they dis are destroyed and you don't need um, this door as your attack route, uh, it's also a possibility to block an opening totally. And then yeah. you would need two curtains at one door. Caleb had a good uh, good question on our chat asking about from a basement fire perspective, do you put it at the top of the stairwell or, or do you put it at the bottom? Um, and that's generated a lot of good discussion in the chat as yeah. well and what some of the things that my guys have just started practicing with in a live fire demonstrations is putting the smoke curtain at the window for a veis tactic you guys have any experience with that uh, no no we have no experience because veis is n absolutely no common tactic uh, in, in in europe and in germany uh, so therefore uh, we will always try to enter we offer an aerial or a ladder for people that can by themselves escape through a window, um, but we would never access, um, nearly never, uh, never say never, but very, very rarely, and we don't train it to access um, a fire through uh, the window. Uh, we would always try to have a charged water line and coming from the interior. Um, therefore, we have no experience with using a curtain in a window for VIS operation. In a basement, if you have a multi-story building and you have the stairway going down all the way to the basement, I would use it at the entrance door uh, to the basement. Uh, if you have a single family building where you maybe have a door at the top of uh, the stairs going down uh, the staircase, I would I would use it at this at this level. We had some really mean training fires where people said, well, if you have some openings at your basement and uh, your interior stair is your chimney, how can you access a fire through this chimney operation going down? Um, and we actually used in some training fires, I don't know if I would be brave enough to do it in a real fire, but in training fires, we did it a couple of times that we blocked the door at the first level, at ground level, um, so that the chimney is blocked. Then we used water, we sprayed water to cool the gases and throttle the fire. And then we were able to go down um, the stairs to the basement because crawling down the stairs to a basement fire in a bi-directional flow would always mean that even if in the European way that you try to uh, cool gases that they don't ignite, but you can't cool gases if you have a bi-directional flow. You cool your gases and a second later, these cooled gases are replaced by hot gases again. So crawling down in a bidirectional flow stairs to extinguish a basement fire, I think it's it's a crown of our um, problems on the fire ground. And we would do it with a blocked chimney. Uh, so we try to stabilize the situation. We try to block all these flows to throttle the fire and then fight a throttled fire instead of fighting a fire that is accelerated by multiple openings. And if you then have some wind gusts or some stupid things, another window is failing and you get you open another flow path, then you get fast changes in the ventilation profile. And we think that these fast changes 
are dangerous. We always think another sentence, we try to secure the situation as it is, avoid fast changes, and then from this position, we want to make it better. Like in a car accident, we set up some lights, we control the traffic around us, we have a charged water lane, we maybe secure the car that it doesn't fall into the river, and then we start our rescue operation. So we have to make sure that during our operation, the situation doesn't get worse. Uh, and this kind of stabilizing a situation is also a key um, process for us. And stabilizing a ventilation or a fire profile is also by keeping openings closed and, and don't open them up by keep the fire under ventilated and, and don't give it additional oxygen. Yeah, also another principle. I love it. Um, this has been one of the best discussions so far, so I really appreciate your time and effort and staying up late <laughs> in your time zone. Um, is there any other questions from the, the group that anybody has and wants to fire off real quick? Okay, well, thank you, Dr. Wright. That absolutely, was absolutely, I do, I do, sir. Seth. Yes, Tony. Um, hold on, let me mute my... Uh... What is the, the, I like the 11 different, sorry. Yeah. I like, I like the, the 11, um, the 11 the different, different faces of, of, of the, obstacles the obstacles where you where might you find, find problems. problems. And, and then, then number five is us. us. Number five that, is that, that, that would really, really help, help with it. Hey, Tony, you got to turn off your phone or your computer audio because you're echoing hard. Okay, is that better? Yeah. Yep, that's good. Is that better, is that now? better now? No. Oh. Now maybe you should turn on your mic again. Yeah, hold on a second. Yeah. So from the FDNY perspective, I would say that we could we could do this with only four I, um, actual conditions, not eleven. And really, that number five is us. Did we figure it out there, Tony? Figure it out there, Tony? No, I don't think so. Is that there? <laughs> yep, that sounds good. Yep, sounds good. All right, so number five is us, and I think that's going to really help with uh, the cell of, um, which is, uh, it's going to be tough, right? It's going to be tough here to, to get my people to bite on this, but that, that that's a good graphic to kind of show that it's us. Yeah. Yeah, it was the, the question for us, if you try to calculate and if you try to examine uh, smoke spread and smoke flow and fire dynamics in a building, we are trying to separate these parameters. And even knowing that these calculations, which we did hundreds of them, they are not totally correct. But if I play with a parameter and if I open one or two or three more square meters, if I add some wind, I might have not the exact numbers, but I get a tendency how much this parameter influences my problem. Um, and then our other discussion was which of these parameters can we actually influence? Maybe the bulkhead or maybe some open windows, but maybe not the wind. Uh, but always we want to get control of the staircase and always we want to be at position number five. Um, and we figured out that keeping the door half closed like the people in Scandinavia do in Finland, they cut the door into two pieces um, and by just lowering um, the door height, um, you get a unidirectional flow because it's like in a, in a big, uh, a big, bigger or higher space. The fire needs some fresh air, and it needs to, like a motor, get rid of its hot, hot gases. And if you offer a fire a one square meter opening higher and another lower one square meter opening the lower opening will be the air intake and the higher opening will be 
the smoke release opening despite if there is no wind you know in a no wind situation in a no wind situation with one square meter at the entrance and one square meter higher at as an outlet you get zero smoke in a staircase um, and this is a, a very easy thing you can try it with an every small model where you build a fire if you have two openings one a little bit higher than the other the lower one will always be the intake because the engine out of fire working like an engine it needs fresh air constantly a flow of fresh air that has to flow to the fire and if you open in the whole height the two meters you get a bi-directional flow and you get flow, smoke into your staircase. By just lowering the entrance door by half, uh, you get rid of 70-80% of the smoke volume that flows into your staircase. And it's an action of a few seconds. And we found that reducing the height of the entrance, re influencing number five, solves lots, lots of our problems. James, did you have a question there? I didn't quite understand what you were trying to get at. I was turning on my mic. Yep. Hi, Michael. How are you? Doing good. I was wondering if you could talk about uh, number eight a little, the mixing that occurs yeah. and the use of the curtain to limit the mixing. Yeah, yeah. The curtain, I don't know. I don't have these slides. Maybe, maybe I should have... Uh, maybe I release them. I could talk much more in detail about flow characteristics. Um, maybe it's this one. Yeah, okay. I, I could I could use this one here. Um, if you look at an opening and if you have a bidirectional flow, and you have through the same opening in, in inflowing air and outflowing smoke, you will always get turbulence. You always get mixing. Um, and if you allow an opening only at the lower parts you get fresh air flowing low it's lowering below uh, the smoke layer so the smoke layer will be lifted up uh, on the whole area of the room and you get concentrated smoke that leaves um, the compartment otherwise with a lot of mixing you get oxygen into your hot gas uh, zone which is a um, fuel rich environment um, so therefore we want to have a curtain with a fabric that has some stiffness and at the bottom of the curtain is a, also a weight line uh, sewn in. So by a lot of calculations but also by a lot of experiences we found that the fabric should have a certain stiffness and it should have a certain weight but on the other side we don't, didn't want to make the curtain too heavy therefore the curtain has a light fabric but has a cord line and um, a weight line soon in at the bottom and this forces the fresh air to actually uh, be released in low um, and if you want to avoid turbulence uh, you have to have a low speed um, and low volume flow which is forced to be flow in at really ground level of uh, your burning compartment and uh, this is you could explain it much more difficult by a lot of thermodynamic expressions but i think for a for an easy understanding um, this is all you need to know excellent well um i think with that we're gonna seal this one up thank you so much dr Reich. i mean this was a this is a great one great participation i think this is the biggest numbers we've had yet on the happy hour so i really appreciate you taking the time out of uh, your day and missing a fire for coming and talking with us yeah, um yeah. getting great feedback on the chat room there was another question in there about the training officer credential being the online platform and i just want to touch base on that what we're trying to do is do a, a tremendous amount of work with the instructor tracked and to be an online deliverable with all of uh, with all the instructors associated with ISFSI. Uh, first one being the training officer credential, and we've started recording that, and so that pilot was still scheduled to be um, end of June or the end of July. So yeah. get to the finish line with that. So um, I put my contact up on the top of the chat. Dr. Reich's putting his in, and if you guys have any questions, fire them away, and we'll so, see you guys next week. Thanks so much for being here, you guys. Yeah. So if anyone, is in, if anyone is interested in the slides or needs any information, this is my shortest 
uh, email mlikemichael at dr-reich.de. Uh, if you email me and need any information, don't hesitate to contact me. Awesome. Thank you so much. Okay, guys. Well, we'll see you guys next week. Thanks for being here. All right. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Yeah.